it's tough when you lose one like that, the way we battle back and to get the game into overtime. And we just didn't start off good. And then that's what happens when, when you're in a position to go finish out the season the right way. When you're here and you have a group of seniors that you want to go finish the season right for them, we have to play better. We didn't play better. Uh, didn't play very good at all today. You know, look at us on offense. We were able. We were able to protect the quarterback. You know, they weren't able to run the ball uh, early uh, in the game. And but we were able to get it going there in the overtime. But then defensively, we played very well. Had a lot of second half. I don't know if they even got a first down. I know we had a lot of three and outs. But you know what? It was still alive. Uh, Rutgers ended up getting beat today. So we're still alive. This football team's still alive. And they still have to go to Rutgers to go win the game to get to the Orange Bowl, get to a BCS Bowl. But what's critical for this football team, you know, we lost one of our be better players got hurt today. And he just showed his, he showed his toughness out there today. You watch uh, Teddy Bridgewater and the way he came back out at uh, halftime and he competed and, and played so well there in the overtime. But, um, you know, this, this football team is hurt. This one hurts because you have a chance at home to finish out the season with a winning record and, and plus to send this, uh, this group of seniors out the right way. Coach, how bad is uh, Teddy's wrist injury and how bad is his uh, leg injury? Well, the leg injury is fine. I want to say that uh, either he fractured or broke his wrist, but uh, he was able to come back there in the second half. We uh, ended up uh, casting the wrist, and the buddy was on the non throwing hand. Charlie, did you try to call timeout? Do you think you got a timeout call before that last field? Well, I told the guy I wanted a timeout, and I thought I had it, but it's, I mean, he hit it anyway. We didn't get the pressure, so, um, but we thought, I thought I got it, but. You think Teddy would be able to play against Rutgers? Oh, he'll be able to play, because he just will finish out. <laughs> Uh, if you look at, you know, he's able to come back the second half, and then uh, even with the leg injury, he was able to bounce back. So uh, we have what, three or four days, so he'll be he'll be able to play. Was it just is it just a matter of him dealing with pain and discomfort as far as it being on his non throwing hand? Well, it's cast right now, so it shouldn't be any pain. I mean, as long as we can keep it protected, and as long as he just don't take a hit on it. Can you say what the leg injury is? Or? Oh, uh, well, he came back, so I think his leg. I think it'd be okay. Maybe an ankle or something. No, it wasn't a knee. Not a knee. Charlie, did it affect the running game because you couldn't really hand the ball off with that left hand? Well, it, no, because if you look at us early in the game, we weren't running the football anyway. So I don't think that affected it at all. He was able to take it. Well, you get into overtime, we were able to get two get. Uh, what we got two big runs. Jeremy had the two big runs there, and he, and he has his right hand, so he can hand it off with his right hand. What was the problem with the running game? You think? Well, the, the thing they did is they wanted at the line of scrimmage, they put two captains, they were able to push us back, and we weren't able to just move. And one of our games is our zone scheme and our gap scheme, and we weren't able to zone off to get to the second level, and their backers were able to get across our face. Seems so like the team seemed a little flat coming out. Did you notice anything in, more, anything in pregame that, that would suggest they would be slow coming out of the game? No, I didn't think we were flat. I mean, if you, if you look at it, it was just we jumped out there, and uh, we, we – uh, we get the ball, and uh, actually we kicked the ball off, and we were able to, to get a stop. But we, if you look at us on defense, I think we end up dropping what four or five interceptions. We dropped the interception in overtime that would have ended the game too. So we had our chances, we had our opportunities, and we didn't take advantage of. Them. Good football teams in a situation like that take advantage, and we did. You used a lot of deep balls, a lot of deep sideline throws. Were the quarterbacks just seeing those matchups and taking them, or was that something that was built in? Those no. No, we were seeing those matchups and taking them, but we weren't winning outside early. Uh, we were getting pinned on the sideline, so we weren't winning outside. But then, you know, there in overtime, we were able to, uh, to get away, break away from them. But still, though, we know even with those throws, we have to win, and we weren't winning outside. We weren't winning in the slot position. What went into the decision to bring Teddy back? Because he didn't start the second half, and I think he came in the second or third series. But well, what happened, we had to go in and cast him. So once we got his hand casted, then he would cast when he came back out. He didn't come back immediately. Though. He was on the sideline for a while. Was there deliberation on your part? No, he just, I mean, we were just trying to get him back into the flow and then back out there and letting the cast. Uh, I think he was trying to get it to harden up. I don't know what the, the medical reason was, but when he was ready to go, we put him in. What do you think the offense started clicking there on the last series when they had so much trouble going into that part of Well, we were able to get the throws. I mean, if you look at the two throws that Teddy made, I mean, we were, there were two big throws that we were able to hit. And then, you know, when you threw the check down and Jeremy Wright was able to make a guy miss. But, you know, even our offense, it, it's, it, it's, the game went on, we were able to start functioning and, get, and looking like the offense that we have. Can you describe what you saw in the interception in overtime? 
Oh, no, it was just a back shoulder throw and a defensive back turn to make the interception. Charlie, is this a game where Sonoris could have been more of a difference maker? No, the way we were blocking, there were no running back would have been a difference maker. I mean, if you look, we got uh, we had so many tackles behind the line of scrimmage, so I don't think Sonoris would have made a difference at all. You had the, the one play was when you brought Scott in late on the goal line and they got him on a rollout. Was that a run or was it supposed to be a receiver out there for him? Or? No, it was a run, and what happened was we had the guy pinned, and we should have just ran downhill, and we tried to get outside, but that was the kick out, so we kicked there right out into it. But no, that was the uh, design where we had everybody was pinned inside. It was just we had a guard on a uh, defender, and it just had the lane, and it's unfortunate we didn't get that one. All right, guys. All right, thanks.